So I just want to say thank you for coming. It is so nice to see you all. I am hoping this is, it'll just be more a trending misdirection because as you know, we opened to the public yesterday and um, I heard this morning that by May 1st, we hope to do away with the station up on the mezzanine, checking temperatures and whatever else we're doing up there. <laughs> masks, I mean masks we probably will still be requiring, but. And then I also heard starting May 1st, we will go back to seven days a week instead of five, Good. and eight hours a day instead of six. So that's something to look forward to. It's Start like having very some encouraging. Some tours? What's that? Some tours? Well, we sure hope so. I know. We sure hope so. Got to get retrained. Yeah, we'll, 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 we'll do some refreshers yeah. for sure. Yeah. But how many of you? I'm curious. How many of you who are here today have had your first or even first and second inoculation? Yay. Woo! Oh, yes. <laughs> have you had your shot? Nice. You guys are great. We're so glad for you. So uh, you all know me. Hopefully you all know Sari. <laughs> Danny's here too. Oh, you all know. oh, Danny, yes. If you don't know Danny, he works at admissions. And he started Hi, like Danny. the day we closed to get into the public, I think, was, was his first day. <laughs> but he has joined some of you for cross-country skiing. And he's fabulous. He's learning. He's really taking advantage of this love that he has had to learn the collection, which is perfect. Really great to have that opportunity. So I'm going to just give a little bit of history of this exhibition and pass it to Sari. We're going to talk about some specific works of art in here um, after we do the general stuff. And then we're going to do an, a, a kind of a token response game in this space, which some of you know exactly what the game is. For others, we'll explain what it is. So just a little bit of history. We've been doing a school art show ever since we opened in this building. So since 1994. We started doing a school art show, and it started just with Jackson Hole Public Schools. And in fairly recent years, Lisa Simmons was in charge, and she started expanding to some of the private schools and some of the, um, like C Bar V, some of the special needs schools. So it grew and grew and grew. You may remember the past two years, it was like you could barely walk through this space. And I think because of COVID and challenges, it has shrunk down a little bit, but more art is coming. So you'll see signs, and Sari will be explaining what is still coming. But we have a really nice selection of artwork here. This is the exhibit some of you will remember that we used to call School Art Spectacular. Kindergarten through 12th grade students create the art in their school art classes with their school art teachers. The theme, <coughs> sorry, the theme varies from year to year. Sari's going to talk about that, what this year's theme is, and um, I think that's probably enough of an introduction, but we've been doing it for many, 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 many years. And it's always fun to see what they come up with. And it's also always fun to see the progression from what they learn in kindergarten, first grade, second grade, third grade. And I think it can be inspiring to those younger kids to see high school work and say, wow, if I stick with art, this is what I could be doing. Because as far as I know, they don't have any comprehensive show like this across the grade levels. You know, they might have fourth graders work in a coffee shop, you know, something like that, or in the library, but nothing like this. So it's a really nice opportunity for them and for us. Okay, Sarah. Yeah. So in case you don't know a little bit of background on how the students or the art teachers pick the themes, typically I have each participating art teacher will submit a theme that they feel excited about or that their students pick. And then all the art teachers and the students will vote together on the theme. So this year's theme was Roots, which we thought was great for the reason that it can be so widely interpreted, which as you can see here, I think there's only a few pieces to me that like conjure up my first image of what Roots means. Um, for anyone who's wondering, we did the intro panel in both English and Boolean Spanish this year. If you're just hearing people interested around town and they're wondering, you can tell them that the exhibit is partially bilingual. Um, and we wanted to do something extra special this year and run the exhibit a little bit longer just because the art teachers and the students are having such a wild year unlike any we've ever seen before. And there's a lot of 
creative solutions happening in here that might not be apparent to the eye at first. So I don't know, do you want to talk about this then, Jane, or sure. do you want me to watch sure. into it? Sure, whatever you want. Okay, I'll let you do this one, okay. this first step. So this piece is, uh, you can see up there, Coulter Elementary School, which is one of the public schools here in Teton County School District. Heidi Thompson has been the art teacher there for quite a few years. It's, uh, let's see, it's K through third, K through, no, now they're integrated, aren't they? So it's K through five mm -hmm. at all the schools. Yeah. I forgot they changed that. It used to just be K through uh, mm -hmm. second or third. Anyway, they interpreted roots, and this is all fourth grade artwork, but they decided to interpret as ancestry. Like, what are your family's roots? Where did your relatives come from? What is your heritage? So among the fourth graders, each kid was asked to research their family roots, their ancestry, and create flags of that country where their ancestors came from. And you can see that they're like, this one is four different countries the ancestors came from. And then they also, as a collaboration, they created this piece, the larger piece, and you can see that it's made up of some of the individual flags like you see here. So individual flags here, here, here from individual kids' ancestry like Canada, Japan. Um, I should know my flags better. Maybe <laughs> I will study this and learn my flags yeah. better. Great Britain. South um, Korea. Uh -huh. I think this is California. Oh, a little right. We have right. Wales. But Sari, why don't you talk about the corks since you, you talked to the teacher about that. Yeah, I know a little bit about the corks. So part of it was just a weight problem. Of they wanted to do something textural. They wanted to do something 3D. They knew they were going to hang it on the wall like this, and corks just happened to be a lightweight material. Um, but part of what Heidi told me is she wanted something that represented unity in the end, as we see all these different countries, but we're all currently living here in the United States. And so she thought the corks were an interesting way to represent all the little pieces of us that come from all these different places and can be built into one unified country. And so all the different corks are painted by different kids. So they all mixed their own paint colors and then Heidi helped them arrange it, which is why you see all the different values of blue and red and white is they're all different and unique, but when you step back, you can tell it's an American. I love that when you cool. squint your eyes, mm -hmm. I mean, it's really different being up close and taking it all in and then stepping back and squinting your eyes, you really see the flag. I almost think it looks, they look a little bit like chalk. They definitely mm -hmm. look Because the paint like is matte. Chalk. Yeah, I thought about that. Mm -hmm. And at any time, feel free to interrupt with questions, because um, I know we're moving through things kind of fast sure. today. Um, this one I know a little bit less about, but what I do know I think is really special. So uh, this teacher, at least from Munger Mountain, or is that? Yeah, Munger Mountain, I'm still learning all my school. Um, wanted to interpret roots a little bit more literally, but wanted to pay heed to the kind of unseen beauty that roots are, which is why she went with something so fun and colorful and a little bit chaotic for the bottom. And then the colorful flowers that we usually see here have been done instead in black and white so that your attention is more drawn to the roots and this sort of like unseen masterpiece under the ground. So the root system and then the flowers up top are all made of individual little construction panels, which you can kind of see if you step up close, but when you're farther back, sort of like this one, there is this sense of unity here where all the kids' pieces have been glued together and there's so much going on that it sort of meshes into one complete piece. Um, so they had a lot of fun building something very 3D. I was told that these chains were a really big hit and had to be essentially one kid got to do chains <laughs> because the rest of them all wanted to do chains. And potentially the next project is building a giant classroom chain, which I would love to see. And I remember having fun with these when we were the kids. Mm -hmm. Okay, do you want to explain? What grade, the, is, what grade did that one? Um, This one was, I'd have to go back and ask her. I'm pretty sure yeah. it was third grade. Okay. Third or second, or maybe a combination of the two. So a lot of the schools are doing something a little bit different this year. There's a low attendance rate. Mm -hmm. So some of the art classes have been combined 
just through them being on Zoom all the time, it's easy to just be like, let's just do the same art project across multiple classes. So you'll see throughout that some of the art pieces are done by kids ranging from like kindergarten through seventh grade all working together, which is kind of what happened to this one over here. Nice. Um, yeah, it's interesting to think about, you know, the different schools have had a different way of organizing and having kids in person or not in person, depending on the school. So Rachel can confirm this, but Coulter yeah. Elementary is in person Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, right. and then they're home on Fridays. But like the high school, for example, the kids are like, they might see their art teacher on Tuesdays and Thursdays, but the other times they're on, uh, you know, on Zoom, online, or they might see their art teacher on Mondays and Wednesdays, and then nobody sees the art teacher on Fridays. So some of them have had very little in-person contact two days a week, mm -hmm. if that, and others have had four days a week. So it really depends. Um, but to, to, to get organized, what a challenge yeah. for those art teachers. I think that might be a good transition into talking about mm -hmm. this one, and I can uh, introduce yeah, it, and then you can explain yeah, I love it. That one. So Mountain Academy of Teton Science Schools is one of the only schools that has done Zoom the entire time. They have no in-person classes for kindergarten, for high schoolers, for grad students. None of it is in person. And so all of these pieces, what Heidi decided to do is not really tell the kids what their finished piece was going to be a part of and have them each create a different unique body part. So like the fox head is by one student, the body is by another student, one leg is by one student, one leg is by another oh student. God. So each one is sort of collage of different students from different grades. And then she had them mail all the pieces in and she put them together, um, which I think is a feat of organization oh when yes. you're dealing with such young kids who Right. Parents have to mail things for them. Wow. I'll let you take yeah, so some of you will remember we've had our own exquisite corpse e exhibitions here at the museum. When Bronwyn Minton was here, she organized a community exhibit which was done in a similar way where some what one artist yeah. did the head, the other did the torso, and the other did the legs. And nobody knows what it's going to look like until it all comes together. And that was in this space right here. It was really fun. Floor to ceiling, uh, exquisite corpses. Uh, some of you may remember the history of Exquisite Corpse. It was a Victorian parlor game. Um, so this is something that's been around since the 1800s. But artists today are you know, interested and intrigued by this idea and replicate it. But I think it's fun to look over here to start with because oftentimes you can kind of see that on, on some of these, but others are done in a collage way. But the traditional way of doing it is to have a piece of paper fold it into thirds, if you are doing this as a parlor game. And so just the top third is visible, and so one person draws the head, and then they very carefully, at the fold, draw the lines showing where the neck ends. And then they fold that over and present it to the next person, who knows this is where I start. And then they create the torso and draw their two lines where their torso ends, and refold it. So the last person knows where to start the legs, and then uh, when it's done, you unfold it and see the whole thing. So it's like this reveal, a surprise. And that's how all these were done. Here you can see the fold, and you can kind of, if you get close, you can kind of see, especially on this one, here's the marks, and then this one's harder to see where the marks are, telling the artist what next. So that's like in its purest form, that's how Exquisite Corpse was done. But in these, like Sari said, because they weren't seeing each other, they were told, you know, do a head, send it in. I don't know how she coordinated, you know, this is two inches, for example. I don't know how she, maybe she all told them all, you know, your neck has to start at two inches. I don't know. But the kids, of course, once again, didn't see the whole reveal until the, until the teacher put them all together. This one is one of my favorites. It has the PRL hand sanitizer as the body. Oh, that's fun. With the little masks around it. Right, right. Um, and a little bit of what Heidi told me when she was here hanging this up is, I think she has one of the most creative interpretations of roots. She wanted to explore art historical roots, uh -huh. um, which I think is not something I would have 
Uh, with the with the exquisite corpse. Yeah, idea. she's like the roots of a certain artistic practice. Oh, interesting. She said she was interested. And then I also just this morning read how she describes it here, which uh -huh. just clarifies it a little bit more because you might look at that and say, I don't understand where does roots come in, which is what I thought the first time I saw it. But she says, create a seed, make things grow, connect at the roots. So create a seed was the kids who did the head. That got the whole process started. Um, make things grow was who, the kids who did the torso. And then connect at the roots, uh, the legs finished it off. So the, being the farthest extreme from the head, it all comes together. An interesting interpretation. I right? really like this one uh -huh. a lot. Yeah, looks so like the yeah. kids had fun with it too. I think so. She said some of them were disappointed because they're so young and I think on Zoom things kind of go in one ear and out the other. And a bunch of them claimed they weren't told that this was going to be in an art show. Oh. They were very upset about it because they would have done a better job. <laughs> 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 I think they're lovely. I think yeah. it's amazing. Well, that's it. I'm glad you brought that up because the teachers tell us every year how important it is to the kids to have their artwork in the museum right. and how they work their hardest if they know it's going to the museum, how yeah. excited they get, and, and we're glad to be a part of that. But one th another thing I noticed is, you know, most of them are vertical mm -hmm. orientation, but then horizontal, 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 I guess you would call that one yeah. horizontal, which Bromlin did also. She had mostly vertical, mm -hmm. but mixed some up and told artists you're going to be yeah. horizontal. And she gave each artist a piece of paper with the lines already marked. This is where you start. This is where you end. And then she had it all marked on the, on the back, like one A, B, C, two A, B, C. So she knew how to put them back together. And this one, I was told the kids said had to be horizontal because they were swimming. Yep. So they're going sideways. Yeah, yeah, the tentacles and the tail. Mm -hmm. Very nice. Yeah. I think this one will be uh, interesting one to talk about. So as you can maybe tell, this spot is a little bit incomplete. And we had a very unexpected snafu at this particular section of the exhibit. So Lauren, who is from the Jackson Elementary School, got the ingenious idea to say, OK, roots, organic material, we're going to use sticks. I didn't think to tell people you can't bring organic material into a museum. Um, especially things that are found in winter because a lot of insects will burrow into sticks mm -hmm. and lay eggs. And if they come in here where it's warmer, they will hatch. Mm -hmm. um, and Emily and Kira Toriel told me about an incident one time where they brought frames online, wooden frames, and there were like these little mites in the frames that hatched and started eating away at the plexiglass of these like antique prints. So we didn't want to deal with that situation. So what we are going to do with this exhibit is kind of make a little bit of a joke of it and say that the sticks and the pieces are in quarantine. <laughs> um, so they will all be treated in anoxia bags, which are oxygen-free bags that will kill anything that is still living in the sticks. And we don't know if we'll be able to do it with the whole exhibit. Her students made these beautiful woven pieces by crossing two sticks together and then weaving beautiful like yarn. God's God's eyes eyes eyes. Eyes. Yeah. And so she wanted to build a whole root system using those. So what we did instead is took really nice quality photos of the display and are going to make a photo collage here. And then there's a few more of these pieces missing that have sticks and we will treat those and hang them up. That way all the kids who did these weavings get their pieces up in person so it feels a little bit more fair. Um, but it was kind of a chaotic, funny story that we were not expecting right. to happen. <laughs> this is the last exhibit to go up, and it just didn't work out. Yeah, yeah. But, but if you came in the back door, which I think you all did, you may have seen a box with a big sign on it saying, artwork from uh, Jackson Elementary, and uh, that's what's in there. Yeah, if you want to peek in there, you can see them. They're really, really stunning. They were some of my favorites. So, yeah, hopefully. so it looked like the kids had a choice whether to do a flat weaving with a cardboard frame mm -hmm. or the God's eye kind of weaving in a circle around the crossed sticks. <laughs> most of them chose to do, unfortunately, most of them chose to do the one on the yeah. sticks. Yeah, these I think are beautiful as well. Uh -huh. Okay, and then I'm going to move back 
fast because it's yeah. 11.20. Yeah. Um, I think I'm going to go to the giant root vegetables hanging from oh, the ceiling. Yeah, yeah, yeah. These are my favorite. Um, so these are from Ellie Ginsbury at Jack the Hole Community School. And basically what this project was is each student in the class picked a root vegetable and then all of these students in the class collaboratively helped them make their root vegetable dream come to life. Um, so these are made from a frame of chicken wire and then different like alternating layers of, she told me, gauze and newspaper. For that, paper mache? Yeah, uh -huh. that she then like dipped in a glue yep. and they pasted on here. So some of them you can kind of see the newspaper peeking through. No flower, because bugs grow in flower. Oh, right. right. <laughs> oh, yeah, I was told that it was glue, watered down glue. Mm -hmm. um, and so each kid did a root vegetable and supposedly we have some more coming in that are still drying. Oh, yeah. Um, that are a giant sweet potato, I think, or, oh, wait, I think or this is that's a sweet, sweet potato. We have a giant, okay. maybe Yukon gold potato or okay. something. We have a turnip to hang up, and she said there was one more, but I don't okay. remember what it was. Well, can you all name these vegetables? Strawberries. So they're all root vegetables. Not this is a radish. I don't know if I wrong, sorry. This is a radish? Yeah. Because they're all root vegetables. Right. This is a, some kind of turnip? Uh -huh. I think it's a beet. Or beet. This, yeah, this, like a beet. this one yeah. is a beet. That's a beet. This one I am not sure. <laughs> this one, she told me, was some sort of like root green, but I don't remember what she said. This one is ginger. Uh huh. This one obviously is a carrot. This one is a sweet potato. And I think turnip? I think yeah. that's a turnip. Yeah. That one's yeah. a turnip, and that one's the radish. They did the mm -hmm. scale right. And then if you have a chance to walk around, you'll see there's writing on the different vegetables. So the kids put things that they felt were like root fears that they had. Um, so there's like free of fear of failure, fear of disappointment, the fear of being judged. One of them just has death written really big on the bottom somewhere. <laughs> uh, fear of dark places, bad reputation, fear of making the wrong impression, fear of being kidnapped, yeah, <laughs> dying alone. Yeah. yeah, so she said they did. She had them distinguish between root fears, really deep fears, and surface fears. So the surface fear might be I might, you know, I might fail a test, but a root fear might be I might die alone. Yeah. For, and so and what, this, what age was this? High school. High school. Okay. Wow. Yeah. So these heavier ones are yeah. on the bottom. Yeah, that one's apple. Mm -hmm. So, but what, what an interesting thing to do during COVID, you know? Yeah. 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 With so many of those deep, deep fears that these kids are feeling. Yeah. I I was surprised looking at these that there weren't more things saying like fear of sickness or fear of illness, but there are quite a few of like fear of losing family or losing, losing family, a loved one. Right. Yeah. Right. So as you get up to up near the top, you see like fear of being judged, but then as you get down deeper, you see fear of darkness. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So they're a little heavy, but I think it's really interesting that the thoughts going into these are so heavy, but they all weigh less than five pounds. Mm -hmm. They're really light. Um, and I love them hanging from the right. ceiling. And she I wanted to hang them in a row, yeah. kind of like plant in a garden. Yeah. Or so right, our right, plant right. seeds in a row. Yeah. And they come up. And then I think I'll do, I'll do this one as a pair, since they, uh, they work together on the same idea. So this I am absolutely blown away is kindergarten. Um, I cannot believe this is kindergarten. Um, but these students are both from the Classical Academy. And in case you aren't aware, part of what the Classical Academy does is everything has to be interdisciplinary in some way or cross-disciplinary. So, they merged art and science in this project by basing their artworks on traditional scientific illustrations. And so you can see some of the kids really took these inspirations to heart. Yep, this one so closely resembles this one. And you can see some of the root systems mimicked on some of these other ones. And so this is a little bit more, I think, 
what they described as a straightforward approach because they wanted their students to have that very clear interdisciplinary connection of studying science while creating artwork. And I think it matched up with some of their, what they were learning in their curriculum as well. I don't know if you want to add anything to this thing, Jane. No, but you did a great job. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Then this wall is all Jackson Hole High School. Um, this is Shannon Barriga's classes. It's a mix of a few different classes. They have Art 1, Art 2, and then they have AP Art as the final art level. And so, again, because the class sizes are so small, the high schools are particularly struggling with students just they have other things on their mind, understandably. Um, so they wanted to do the roots of passions or the roots of strong feeling. So you have the roots of a bad day, or like this one I love is the roots of joy. I think that one is outstanding. I, I like this one a lot, which is the roots of disco. Um, so it's just <laughs> things that the students felt really strongly about, and she just wanted them to have as much fun with the interpretation as possible. She didn't feel like it was valuable to limit them, especially right now. Uh, just paint or draw whatever you're feeling. And I think I love seeing such a wide breadth of creativity with this one. Yeah, that one probably has the, she gave them the most leeway in how they so. interpreted yeah. it, which is really different. And it yeah. makes me wish each student had written more of a yeah. explanation. Yeah. Because she said that one on the upper right, for example, mm -hmm. is a girl who has had a really, really hard year, and she's you know seeing mental health counselors, but the teacher felt that doing this project really helped her mm -hmm. to work through some of that it's stuff she was work. dealing with. Yeah, it's, really it's beautifully yeah. painted and mm -hmm. composed. Um, but the teacher said she took it to the counselor and said, I need you to look at this and tell me if we need to be worried about this girl. Same one with the purple mm -hmm. sweatshirt. Oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, you can see like the yeah. alarm clocks in the background. Oh, yeah. And then, um, because this is a mix of AP students, so for students who take AP art, they have to do what's called an art concentration, and they submit that to Scholastic, sometimes to get art awards, and then they submit it to basically AP judges to score their portfolio. And so some of these, like Roots of Disco, and then um, the Roots of the Tetons, so these are all parts of those students' concentration projects where they pick a theme or a concentration and create a bunch of artwork in a bunch of different mediums, kind of revolving around that same idea. Image, yeah. Image, right? yeah. What about the horns? Uh, so this one is Roots of Determination, and so what I think this is referencing is partly the uh, zodiac calendar of Sagittarius is said to be a very determined sign on the horoscope. So she happens to be a Sagittarius, is what I was told. I don't know too much about horoscopes, but I have friends that are very into it, have told me all sorts of things. I don't know what I believe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and then do you want to talk about sure. the magazine cover? Too? Sure, the magazine cover, this is Hannah mm -hmm. Oregon, who is she teaches at Jackson Hall High School. Does she teach somewhere else there, or just Jackson Hall High School? She also teaches at Summit. Summit, mm -hmm. okay. So she, it's a digital uh, Photoshop class. And so she, the assignment was to create a self-portrait mm -hmm. that examines the roots of who you are, either you know, what your interests are, um, where you want to go in the future, that kind of self-exploration kinds of questions and then create it into, a, take your self-portrait. So these are all photos of the kids themselves, and then create, it, create a magazine cover. And she said they could either take the design of an existing magazine, which many of them, like the New Yorker, you'll recognize the font and the layout, Sports Illustrated. Um, I'm assuming uh, World Soccer is a real magazine. That one's, time, uh, let's time see, she told me which ones weren't real. Time is a real magazine, yeah. Vogue, of course, is. This one is not, that's her name. Okay. Right. Big Climber Tiredness. Weekly sounds real, but she doesn't think it is. Okay. <laughs> Healthy Living also sounds real, but is not. Oh. 
But yeah, that one I had no idea. And then of course Roots, where he came from, is probably made yeah, up. Yeah, that one's made up too. And then this is, uh, which one was I looking Oh, this is the student's name, so this one's mm -hmm. made up too. Yeah. Bill Bork is real. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. But they did a really nice job. I mean, when I saw it, I didn't realize initially those were the students themselves. Yeah. I thought, okay, what did they do here? What is, oh, what's true. going on here? But these are pictures of themselves integrated into a cover mm -hmm. design. Yeah, which I thought it's was very really clever, creative. I think. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then this one also took a similar approach to Shannon and Amy Lowry with kind of letting the kids have a little bit more creative freedom. And these, I don't want to say there's like a specific theme going on here. I think what's most helpful with this particular set of kids is they did provide little art statements and all of them did really something nice. very, very different. So she basically said, here's our theme interpret it how you will and so a bunch of them did references to like animals and evolution and roots so you can see kind of like the roots of the lily pad here or the roots at the start of a river some of them in are incredibly one. profound they did a really good job I know. This one. yeah like this one if you read the description i think is really really mm -hmm. lovely about the roots of the origins of people and reaching out to further our roots um, and so I definitely recommend taking the time to individually read all of these because they're yeah. it's really lovely to always hear from the kids themselves and why they made the artistic decisions they made because it's very clear yeah. a lot of thought goes into it. One I was reading this morning was this one with the Mac here. Mm -hmm. Susan and I were looking at it yeah. and it's Mia Brazil whose father Jeff Brazil is a running coach at the at the high school. And she said it represents both of her parents, where they come from. So one parent from uh, Minnesota. Is that Minnesota? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. With the hockey stick representing that. And the other is from Seattle, Washington, with she, uh, the space Sharon, needle. Sharon Brazil. Um, she's first grade teacher at Coulter. Oh, OK. Me okay. as a, like a student assistant for Henry. Oh, They're kind okay. of friends. So the parents both really work sweet. for Teton County mm -hmm. School District. Yeah. And so then the dotted line shows each parent. This is the mom, and here's the dad the route they took to come to Jackson, where their kids were born, with the Tetons right here. So it's like a personal family roots where the parents came from and where they ended up. And then if anyone asks, just because they're curious, this blank wall is going to be filled on Friday. Uh, this particular art teacher, her students weren't meeting all the time in person. And then when we entered the purple zone, there was some more severe closures, so they had to take last week to wrap things up, and so she's bringing the artwork later. So COVID has shook up all our schedules, but the exhibit will be officially complete on Friday, but, but we didn't think what about there was the, a need to postpone the opening. Still, yeah, yeah, and, and uh, the yeah. sculptural mm -hmm. stuff. So this is a part of this same exhibit. These two students just happened to really want to do something 3D, so she said, go ahead and do something 3D. And I, I mean, I think this is absolutely lovely. It is cool. And then these are Hannah Horrigan students, which were reprinting her sign because of a spelling uh, mistake. But she also typically teaches ceramic classes. But again, with the way school is, Photoshop is definitely much easier to teach online. Yeah. So only a few students got to do ceramics. And so they did collaborative projects. So each of these pieces is a collaboration of about three to four students. So this one is one of my favorites. Is It's kind of like a little totem pole. We thought we'd leave this one open because it's a cup. Um, but the students picked animals that they thought best represented their root selves. So this one felt like they were best represented by a panda, a chameleon, and then this one's a frog. And then this one is kind of an allusion to all the cardinal directions and the four students picked places they felt they were closest to their roots in Jackson. So some of them picked the Tetons, there's some kind of allusions to ranch life, the ski lift, and then kayaking where they felt were a part of their identities. And then there's a lot of similar things going on back here and there's some Again, the idea with the flags on some of these panels back here. So I think the ceramics are really fun. It's always nice to throw in some 3D work. 
Should we do the trading cards real quick? Oh my gosh, yes, the trading cards. Mm -hmm. Do you want to do those, Jane? Sure. Do we have time? Yep, it's, okay. it's uh, 1137. Perfect. Yep. So Sari and I are interviewing one of our prospective interns, summer interns at 12. So that's why we're watching the time. But so this is Save RV Ranch School, which some of you know is kids who, it's, so it's, it's, a, like a, it's a branch of the public school system, but it's kids from all over Wyoming who have physical or developmental disabilities and they live there and they have counselors in their cabins and they have all of their classes um, on campus there. And I don't think they leave campus very much. Once in a while, the kids who have like good behavioral reports are allowed to come mm -hmm. on field trips and they sometimes come here. Yeah. I see them at the grocery store occasionally. Is that yeah. Right? yeah. She said yeah. that she is especially limited just because a lot of the kids who happen to have physical disabilities are very high risk as well. So there oh, haven't been right. as many outings as they that usually would be. Yeah, but she did a really fun thing. And these are art. She had each kid create artist trading cards which she wrote up a history here, which I found very interesting. Mm -hmm. It's a pretty big movement. Artist, it's a big movement, apparently. Mm -hmm. Rachel yep. knows mm -hmm. about it. And I've heard of it, but I didn't know that much about it. But true artist cards, um, they, they were first introduced, artist trading cards, in 1997 yeah, by a true. Swiss artist. And true artist trading cards are swapped or given away. They're not sold. So um, the Swiss artist created some and explained how it worked to other artists and cr encouraged other artists to make cards. And then it'd be like, Bobby, if you created some of yours and I created some of mine, we might trade cards like that. So each of these plastic sleeves has cards made by one particular student. And you'll see some similarity, like these mm -hmm. all look kind of the same, these mm -hmm. all look kind of the same. She also wanted them to pick a quote that was important to them that you'll see, some of them are really hard to read, but you'll see some of those quotes worked into the piece here and here and mm -hmm. here like that. Um, I don't know if she intends after the exhibit's over to have them actually trade cards with each other. She said they want to, they but want they, to. that's why they're in binder sleeves so the kids can put them in their school binders uh -huh. when the show I is over and idea. trade them with one another. I love the idea. Cool. And I know some of them were interested in potentially when the show is over getting them away to visitors too, which is really, really cute. Mm -hmm. And she says, see Barbie students identified a personal connection <laughs> with the theme of roots, each selecting a quote that aligned with this Topic. Students then worked to create a visual expression of their quote as it relates to their identity through a series of small artworks, ATCs, which stands for Artist Trading Cards, which I didn't know either. Now you all know what an ATC is, an Artist <laughs> Trading Card, if you didn't know before. The theme and related quotes served as a springboard for vis visual <coughs> exploration of the theme roots. Trading cards provided options for meaningful snapshots of content, expression, and completed series of page of cards tells each student's story. So that's why she wanted to keep them together in one sleeve yeah. per student. And I know some of these that don't have names on them, like this one, the kids asked the art teachers to make some too so they could trade with oh. the art teachers. So like some of these are our art, teacher. art, art teachers. Oh, I think that I one's see. not. But the yeah. ones that are missing names were done collaboratively between the students and the art teachers. Oh, okay. Interesting. Cool. It's a nice idea. Yeah, I like it. I think it's really sweet. Uh -huh. So that is the exhibit. Great. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Our hope is that this will give you enough interest, place to start, so that when you have groups, which we hope you will soon, mm -hmm. you will bring them in here and you will want to share this space with them because we do find our visitors love to see the kids' artwork. And like Sari said, it's up longer than usual. Yeah, Many we're up till May 9th. Till May 9th? I was going to say, how long is it up? Oh, we're okay. up till May 9th, <laughs> potentially <laughs> extending the exhibit depending on our next exhibit after this is Woven Together Art and Arachnids, which is a mesh of professional artwork with student artwork. And then we're going to have Bison Cast, the new spider episode, screening on this wall. That exhibit is set to, set to open June 26th. So depending on how long we think that setup's going to take, we could extend state of the art another couple weeks. Sure, but we haven't made that decision yet. Nice. Yeah, so 
uh, the two brood people in here, it's if the kids come, with Danny, I'm telling you this, with their families, they get free admission while the exhibit is up. They just need to say, I'm one of the student artists. Hopefully the teachers have told them that. I told the teachers Very to good. tell them that, Very so good. hopefully that gets translated. That's great. So what we were thinking would be really fun as a follow-up, because I think you all have 15 minutes or so left before this is officially over, is token response. So the, we do this sometimes with school groups in the galleries. It's gonna, we're gonna play in just in this gallery space here. Each person is gonna get a paper heart and you're gonna go around this exhibit and choose a favorite work of art. Not just a favorite group of art, which we've been talking about, but maybe you really like this blue, is it a fro frog or a toad? Yes. Frog. Yeah, it's a frog. <laughs> okay, if you decide you really like this and it can be for any reason, there's no right or wrong answer, we always say. Some people's favorites, it comes from the palette. I love the colors that are used, warm colors, cool colors, whatever it is. Other people, they might say, I just really love frogs. So yeah. this one I'm attracted to. Like I said, there's no right or wrong answer. It might have to do with uh, the composition. It might have to do with the subject. It might have to just go do with an emotional feeling you get from looking at it. So you're each gonna choose a favorite and you're gonna place your token on the floor underneath. So if it's a stack of artwork like this, the bottom one would be closest to the wall. If you want to choose the middle one, you'd put it about here. And if you want to choose the top one, you'd put it out here. It's not a perfect system, but... And then once everybody's had maybe five minutes to choose one and place their tokens... Oh, here's another thing kids often ask. What if somebody chose my favorite? You can overlap. You can both choose the same one if, you, if it's really your favorite. Then you'll go around as a group and you'll talk about, briefly, talk about what did you like about this one. The purpose of this is not only to get you looking closer, but get to, to get everybody else looking closer too. Because if Lori chooses one that, to be honest, I've never had, looked closely at, this is my chance to look closely at it and see what she likes about it. So it, it won't take long. Um, I'm going to put these on the bench. I'm going to put half the stack on this bench and half the stack on this bench. Take five minutes to look around and make your choices. And then, Rachel, if you could uh, take it from here. Yeah. In terms of, in five minutes, do a quick walk around. Um, you know, just see how the time is going and if who wants to talk. Yep. Okay. Thank you all. Hey, thank you. It's nice to see you. one. I really like this bird with the flower. Um, it says, I used the prompt roots in my drawing and the flowers. They are deeply rooted into the ground and yet the bird still has one of the flowers. I see the plants as a symbol for your youth and growing up. 
and the bird oh. I see as a significant life event that changes you. Wow. That one just kind of stopped me, like, wow, it's really profound. Um, and a cool piece, too. From far away, that bird looks like a bag cloud. Oh, they don't uh -huh. stay there? Uh -huh. Storm cloud. It does. <laughs> it does. I just picked up the ones I mm -hmm. did, you know. And then there's a few over here. It looks like the part still roots over there, right? Yeah. Nancy's, I think. Yeah. Can I write something on my heart? You may. Okay. Okay. Just do it. Your thoughts. You may. Feel like you. Oh my god, me too. That's amazing. They are fantastic. Wow. Those are really lovely. 